all the maids of order and tax those were development are there I mean fifth meeting. Or uh, first off, we got an adoption of the agenda, but we do have an addendum to add the uh, information only section D. We're going to add the Sturgeon City March 2024 update. And with that, I call for a motion to approve. So to approve, which with changes? Uh, for second. All right. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We got the agenda handled, and then we got. One set of minutes from way back in November that we can remember. Um, I, it, I did it, until I read it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> any uh, any comments on the agenda? If not, I'll have a motion. Make Someone. a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we got the minutes. So we're going to move right on to our first action item, uh, FY 2324 spending plan modification and Anthony will turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, gentlemen, and thank you for spending time with us on the business of the Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority. The good news is, is that we've got a lot of great stuff to talk to you about. Unfortunately, we missed the January meeting, so we're kind of doubling up on information. Uh, the good news is, is that you get to listen to me for probably about the next 10 minutes before I turn it over to folks who actually know what they're talking about. So, but as is customary, we wanna to talk to you about a modification to the spending plan. Uh, this is the current year spending plan. We'll talk about next year's here on the next item. But as you recall, periodically during the year, things come up that we wanna invest in or that we wanna participate in and uh, to do so, a lot of times it requires that we modify our spending plan. And so this is nothing really new. It's a very routine action. And we've got two items that we would like to you to consider this afternoon. So in your package, you've got the spending plan uh, as, as it's usually formatted. And the items that we're gonna talk about are on page nine of your agenda and they're highlighted in yellow. If Mr. Hagen were here, he could help sell this one for me, but he's not, so I'm gonna try it by myself anyways. But uh, when, just imagine what you're, what you're seeing here on the screen is the Commons Gymnasium, okay? And when that gymnasium was designed, it was designed with full court basketball play in mind. And as you can see also, the scoreboards are located in a very traditional fashion for full court basketball play. However, our challenge is working with our friends at the Sports Commission and of course with uh, Recreation and Parks, a majority of the tournaments that are there as well as rec youth recreation basketball and tournaments that we also plan to have in the future, they use half court play essentially doubling up the capacity of the gymnasium. But the issue is, if you're playing half-court basketball, the current scoreboards are in a location that's really not that effective, okay? So imagine that, and I hope this, Lisa, can you turn the in? Oh, never mind, got it. So imagine that you're playing here on the right-hand uh, court. Folks are looking, well, maybe I didn't get it. Ah, there we go. So whether you're going, let's just say north or south, you're always looking over your shoulder really in both directions to see what the score is, what the time is, et cetera. And that's been a pretty significant limitation for events like ECI where we have how many games? Well, there's 36 teams. <laughs> let's just say there's a lot of games in one weekend and of course, it's not only a challenge for the, for the participants, but it's also for the officials. So the request is for the directors to consider partnering with the city of Jacksonville to allocate $10,000 uh, to match what the city is already considering to put in to, up, to add the additional scoreboards as shown on the half court, on the half court uh, play. 
Any questions on that one? This is this essentially would be a tourism related expense. We can't really justify this as a promotion expense. All right. Any questions uh, for Anthony on this? We've got another one, sir, if you don't mind. <laughs> so moving to the next one, as you recall, we received a request from the from the Museum of the Marine earlier in the year to uh, assist them with construction administration expenses. And at the time, we said that request might be a little mature or premature because they hadn't revised the designs, they hadn't acquired all of the funding for construction, the lease hadn't been signed by, by the Department of Defense. You know, fast forward to where we are today, all of that has happened and they've modified the design. It's within budget. They've designed all of the exhibits. As you can see here, to include General Gray, the 29th Commandant of the Marine Corps. Unfortunately, we lost him last week, and I know there's a, a group of folks who are going to, uh, I believe it's Alexandria, to participate in, in his remembrance ceremony. But they are scheduled, now that all of that is done, the lease is signed, the money's there, the design is where it needs to be, they are scheduled for a groundbreaking in May, and the goal is to get it under construction in June. So we've already worked with them to a certain extent to deconflict the ceremonies that we have at the, at the Lejeune Memorial Gardens and start to plan for how this would actually occur while keeping normal operations open to a certain extent. So that being said, the two requests are, again, scoreboards at $10,000, which is 50% 50, 50 of what the actual cost would be. Our goal and the charge that the city manager has put on us is to get them ordered and installed by, by, the ECI. by ECI, which is in June 20th. June 20th. <laughs> <laughs> so guess what? <laughs> We've been working on that already. Okay. Uh, and then also to allocate funding for the Museum of the Marine to the amount of $100,000. If this is approved, the unobligated tourism um, related, unobligated is the right, not the right word, the unassigned tourism related balance would be 348,691. So we're certainly not taking that down to anywhere close to zero. And that's just this year's? Yes, sir, that's FY24. Okay. FY25, we would consider it a later date. All right. Gentlemen, any comments, questions? Do you just have to do it as one or two? Excuse me, sir? Do you have to submit this as one or just all together or separate? One motion. One motion for both if you choose to approve it. If you don't like one, you can do one versus the other. Just a quick question. I, I know in the past uh, we've divided that up, but that's because they were using the money previously for promotions as well as some uh, tourism related. This is all strictly towards construction administration, therefore it is to all tourism related. That's correct, okay. yes. So the last time we talked about this, the intent was put the money in the ground. You know, now that they have the, all of their approvals, right. we want to move it towards actually being a tourism attraction in the very near future. And so do they have their construction administration in place or they know who's going to do it? Yes, and, sir. And the construction as well? So before they even got the approval from, from Department of Defense, they had put the project out for bid. They selected a general contractor. They also hired a third-party construction administrator to do the, to you know, monitor construction on their behalf. We actually met with that gentleman yesterday, and he seems to be very experienced and knowledgeable. I can't remember who the construction contractor is, but uh, when I was talking to our city engineer here, he said that they are a very, very high-quality firm, and they only do large, large projects. So. Mr. Chairman, as is, is I'm reading the tea leaves and believe there's going to be a motion to approve both of these, I would ask that you, in that motion that you direct us to draft a motion, excuse me, a, an agreement between the TDA and the m museum that the money be spent 
for bricks and mortar as the other monies that you have given them in the past has been spent so that it could be follow the same prototype and the same type, if I'm understanding correctly. That sure, that, sure, that's a great point. You know, all of these grants come with an agreement. And like John was saying, all we need to do is modify the scope of that to say we're not paying for promotions anymore. We're paying for bricks and mortar. That's what the money needs to go to. All right. That sounds good to me. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll make that motion uh, what he said. I'll second that. I'll second what he said. I'll second what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that, a third? Uh, Rose, Rose, can, Rose uh, she knows my mind. She can, she can interpret that. Uh, motion. All right, gentlemen. Well, we've got a motion on the table. Let's call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 We need no opposed. We'll, we'll go. We've got that modified. Thank you. That's great. Okay, so we can move on to a draft spending plan. Yes, sir. 24 uh, 25. Yes, sir. This is the upcoming year spending plan. And really, the intent here is just to give you a taste of what it might look like uh, as we get into the next meeting when we ask the directors to approve a budget and also to approve the spending plan. So we're transitioning from the normal agenda to a much larger sheet of paper here. You know, my eyes aren't as good, so I like to print it out as big as I can. This is what the subcommittees have been looking at independently. So a lot of this you've already seen, but I wanted to show you what it looks like all together in context. For the folks at home, the spending plan is a line item budget that provides guidance for us to execute. So it basically tells us what the directors want us to work on every year. It also provides a framework to award the grants and the nonprofit applications. And like Mr. Carter just said, all of those are done through agreement so that everybody is clear on what the money is to be used for. So proposed revenue. Yeah, excuse me, we're recommending that the occupancy tax budget be set at 1.25 million. That's up from uh, prior years, and, and I'll show you why that makes a lot of sense here in just a second. And also investment interest income is up significantly, even from last year. And all of that has to do with Sabrina and her team working hard to make sure that our money is working for us. Was it three or four years ago that it was only about $2,000, $5,000? Mr. Thomas, you'd remember better than me, but you know, it was, it was negligible. And in such a short period of time, we're generating real interest uh, revenue to help support our mission. So uh, promotions fund, fund balance transfer, that's something that we do every year. It's at 23%, just like we did the year before. The intent is to continue drawing down that relatively large balance that we currently have, and again, make that work for us. And then late payment penalties, that's an input-output exercise. So if a hotelier is late in paying their occupancy tax, that comes with the penalty. We don't get to use those penalties. We get to turn around and hand those to the Board of Education. And that, of course, is a state law. So looking at the occupancy tax, the blue line here shows you actual revenue receipts. And then the orange shows you what's projected over the next few years. The red line is the 1.1 million that we appropriated this year. Uh, the spike that you see, and we've talked about this a number of times, Hurricane Florence, you know, for better or for worse, really did wonders for the occupancy tax that year as a lot of people were here doing repair work. Unfortunately, some people had to live in a hotel for a while while their homes were repaired, but that's an anomaly, <clears throat> and of course, and you can see that. <clears throat> Excuse me. What we're recommending for fiscal 25 is 1.25 million. It's an increase over the 1.1, but we feel that it's still very conservative in what we expect to recover. So given the, the, the um, the uh, regression model there, uh, we're looking at uh, possibility of recovering 1.4, but again, the 1.25 is conservative, but it still kind of addresses some of that increase that we expect over time. 
From an expenditure standpoint, you're aware that we have three different line items here. One is administration. That money is essentially used to pay for uh, the audit to offset some of our costs for the city as well from our overhead <clears throat> and pay for insurance and bonds. Promotions, we're very well aware of what that's for and then also tourism related. So the promotions number there is not just straight from the formula, it also includes that 23% fund balance transfer that we're recommending. Total recommended uh, expense, 1.664. Some highlights here, uh, Alexis would really like to continue getting a paycheck and we feel like she should probably, uh, she probably deserves to do that. So we'd like to keep her on board events we're at 11 right now but as you see on this document here there are some areas highlighted in green those are ones that we still need more information on before we make a final decision that doesn't have to be done before uh, july 1st that can be done at any point in time but the main thing is we're continuing to support really great events and particularly those who are in their infancy and starting to really grow <clears throat> Excuse me. It's pollen season. Trails and, and blueways, that's something that we've worked on for the past couple of years. We want to continue making enhancements there. Signage, we would like to integrate those into a mobile application if at all possible. Uh, Commons digital sign, unfortunately the, the old sign was taken out when we constructed the park and ride and we just haven't put it back in. So this would allow us to install a sign in the location, well, near where the old one was, but then also add one on Commons Drive. These would be variable message signs so that we could advertise what's going on and also what's coming up. Because right now, really the only thing in that area that would indicate to you that that's the rec center is seeing it. <laughs> there, there's no real signage to, to, to point that out. An event tent, um, this is a, uh, essentially a, a party tent that we would like to purchase, and it gives us some added capacity with events like ECI, where some of the backstage stuff could happen inside an air-conditioned tent. Uh, unfortunately, the Commons doesn't have enough space to handle all of that indoors anymore, and so this gives us opportunity to do that in a little bit more comfortable environment. It's in a tent, but still, you know, at least people are not on top of one another. It can also be used for a variety of other different purposes. Some of the bigger ticket items, we'd like to consider purchasing a portable stage. This is a reoccurring rental expense that we have as well as the city has and also our events. So the, our event coordinators, whether it be the powwow or you know, a number of other different events that are outdoors that have stage presence, they have to rent that right now. And by having this, you know, we could reduce some of our reoccurring rental costs, but then offer this as a benefit to some of our event partners so that the rental costs that they end up paying today could possibly be reinvested in making their events bigger and better. We would also use this for something really neat that Susan's going to tell you about here in just a few minutes. And last but not least, we'd like to venture into the world of technology by having informational kiosks. One would be at the airport, and we've already negotiated with them on terms for that. Um, it's great that they're going to allow us to put it there for free. Uh, but then they're also going to help keep an eye on it and maintain it. Uh, to a certain extent and let us know when something happens. You know, but this not only comes with a display like you see here, and I think we all take these for granted when we go to other places. You see them all over the place. This is just something that we haven't caught up to yet. But with this, um, it's not that we're just getting this unit right, these units right here, because we're looking at two of them but it would also come with a mobile application that we could use for Visit Jacksonville. So identifying points of interest, uh, restaurants, adding in the, the trails and the blue ways, like I mentioned before. You know, again, we're really just kind of trying to modernize our approach 
to attracting people and helping people navigate our community while they're here visiting. All right, so all that being said, the spending plan summary is here. Revenue 1.6, expenditures the same, and you can see the, the breakdown and, and the administration promotions and tourism related. A majority of the budget remains unchanged, meaning that it's very consistent from last year to, the, to this year. The, the, the items that I just highlighted there are the ones that are a bit different than what you've seen in years prior. So at this point, no action is required. This again is just information, information for you as well as the folks watching at home. We do have another series of subcommittee meetings coming up. So if you have any changes that you would like to see, we can address them then. But I'm also happy to answer any questions that you may have. Yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, the uh, credit card fees, big mm -hmm. jump, triple. What's, uh, what's going on there? Well, I think, and Sabrina can probably answer this a lot better than I can, but the way that I've seen it is that we've consistently under budgeted for that. And, and what, what credit, I, I guess this is purchases we're, we're making on behalf of the TDA or the city TDA, but we're using a city credit card or a TDA credit card? No. I, I don't believe so. Those are payments that are made to us using a credit card. Payments made. Uh, payments. So oh, I see. Payment. By by the by, by the our hoteliers. Uh, yes. Our hoteliers and and of course, uh, we're getting hit with the the fees. It's a percentage. Okay. So some of the occupancy tax payments are rather large, and we do allow them to pay with a credit card. So we have to pay fees on that. Um, the and then um, I think it has been under budgeted. And then as more and more people pay electronically, um, then it, yeah. the it, the price yeah. increases that way. Okay. Well, that's that's a good problem, meaning, yeah. you know, we get our money, but uh, and and the money seems to be increasing. So, you know, but then Visa and Mastercard get their money too, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Anthony, I appreciate it. All right. It's nice to sir. have the details and to know what we're what we're spending and where it's going. And we'll look at, I guess, in May. Uh, have this. In our a motion format. Okay, so now we're going to our logo update. Yes, sir. Last, certainly not least, and then I'll sit down. How about that? <laughs> this is yet another item that we've talked about individually at our subcommittee meetings. And actually, we've talked about it several times. And and at those meetings, there's been a broad consensus about moving on from our current logo into something a bit more modern that reflects things that we want to promote about Jacksonville, namely our outdoors and our water resources. So for many years, the logo here has served us well. And it's a reflection of the, the Freedom Fountain, excuse me, which of course is an iconic uh, feature of, of Jacksonville and Onslow County and then receive a hero's welcome that's the tagline that accompanied that um, it, it's really it really drives home the fact that we're a military community and and while we we love and we cherish that one of the things that we've learned along the way working with um, peers like visit NC and doing our branding study is that people already know we're a military community but what they don't know is that we have other resources and amenities that they might want to come enjoy. And so as we move forward, there's been an interest in looking more at the outdoors, looking more at the fun, right? And so as part of our branding study, we had the opportunity to test three different logo options. <coughs> Excuse me. All three of these were developed in-house. So uh, we didn't go out and hire a consultant to develop these. Uh, they were all developed by folks that work very closely with us every single day. And the questions were simple that they asked, which one do you like and why do you like it? Okay. Overwhelmingly, the one at the top of the screen was the one that people liked. And they liked it because it was bright and colorful and it reflected the outdoors. Something that people didn't know about Jacksonville. 
However, that was really just kind of a first pass for us. And by the way, our media services department designed that. Over time, we, we continued to evolve that concept to what we showed you uh, probably in the past two subcommittee meetings, where we've got the one on the left that is the colorful image that we would use to outwardly promote Jacksonville. But then on the right-hand side, we realized that the one on the left is not going to be reproducible in all forms. And so we needed a more simple version, too, to maybe embroider on T-shirts or, you know, whatnot, using it, use it in more administrative ways. So this is, this is what we had recommended to the directors that we move forward with. Now, the, the appearance of a logo is very subjective, and people can have opinions all the way around. Uh, we've also talked about this, too, and the fact that we do not want this to be a static thing. So this is where we would like to start, and we don't plan on changing it every two weeks, right? But we do plan on, on, on uh, evolving it over time as our needs and as uh, just visual preferences change. So again, while the other logo served us well for a long time, we'd really like to change the message that we're conveying here. And we're not really looking for a vote, so to speak. Uh, if you prefer, that's a good way to go. But consensus is something that we would like to have because our attorney tells me that we like things on the record when we change. <laughs> How about that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, as we indicated when you started the subcommittees, that you, as subcommittees, three and one, three and the other, had no legislative authority. I know Anthony's educated you and brought you up to the point where you're at today with three in this committee and three in that committee, but the changing of the logo, I think, is a significant thing that needs a uh, action by the TDA, if that's what you want to do uh, here, going from the Freedom Fountain to this, so that, uh, again, you as a body, you've got to have a quorum to do business in a regular or special meeting like you are today. So I think, for the record, I think it is important to uh, have a vote and to say this is what we want to do. And if, you, if you want to do that, if you don't, then you can stay with certainly what you have or send them back to the drawing board, whatever your, your decision might be. Okay. Very, very sound advice. Thank yeah, you, sir. Yeah, thank you for that, John. I mean, we've had ample opportunity to analyze this and, and I think we're all familiar with it. I think we're all pretty satisfied. I, you know, I know that, uh, like you said, it's nice to change it up every now and then. One question came to my mind, are we going to, once we, when we do this, will we go back and modify any of the signages we've got in place? There's a couple of signs I thought about. Maybe you, the, you're probably referring to the uh, gateway signs more correct. than anything. That's what, that's what came to mind. That's something that we're going to have to look into. I don't know what the cost of that might be or the logistics, but... Uh, moving forward, like the new signs that are going out at the Memorial Gardens, that'll have the new logo on it. We've talked about retrofitting others where it makes sense, but, you know, it might be just an attrition thing. So as we rotate out signs because of maintenance, we do it then. Frankly, I don't think we've gotten far enough to have a solid answer for you. Okay. But well, we'll just keep that in mind. At some point, we would like <coughs> this yeah. to consistently be the image of the Tourism Development Authority. All right. Well, gentlemen, one, do you want to someone make a motion that we'll and you approve? Said the, the bird is an osprey, right? Yes, sir. The bird is an osprey. Right. And, right. and another footnote here. We, we know that you would like to have the claws on there, Mr. Jackson. I know. I know. Something. <laughs> but one thing to point out, too, there are some very strong ties between what you see there and what you see behind you on the city seal. The sun, the colors, the water. You know, all of that is, is very similar so that there are strong ties and we feel that that's a very appropriate thing to do because the city of Jacksonville and the Tourism Development Authority are very, very close, very closely intertwined. Okay. I echo Mr. Jackson. Uh, we, I think we need to make, make it so that it really does identify as an Osprey. Okay. Uh, we've got the Jacksonville Osprey baseball team coming this summer. And of course, we have the 
the largest, I think, Osprey operating helicopter base. So sure, I, I'd, I'd like it to be a little more. It looks more like a, a turkey buzzard, turkey vulture to me. <laughs> um, but but uh, you know, I can see where you where it looks like an osprey, except it isn't quite. And I would love to see the claws. Let's uh, let's start with this, and we'll put some other options together. How about that? Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to miss the old one, though. Are you? Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> no. No. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the new logo. Second that. All right. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Anything? Got that? Gentlemen, thank looks, you. Looks, looks great. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll work on the clause. <laughs> And so we're going to move right into a sports commission update. And yes, sir. Steve Smith, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Randy, you always call me Steve. It's Scott. Scott. Okay. <laughs> There's another guy. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> um, so in your packets, you have a few recaps. So I'm not going to spend time on many of those. I just want to highlight a couple of things. So on... Um, the Beat the Bridge event back in January, we had 488 folks for that. That was up 33% over previous year. Am I controlling photos? Okay. Sure. 11% uh, of those were from three and a half hours or more away. And then with our Sledgehammer Beach Run, there was 346 uh, folks signed up for that. That was actually down about five from last year. However, our out-of-towner numbers were up. 19% of those folks were from two hours or more away, and 10% and were from four hours or more away. And then the event that we had back in February, the Carolina Gloves that you guys have, have supported, this was year two. There was 227 boxers. Uh, that was up 22% over last year. Only five of those boxers were from one hour or closer, one hour in or closer. There was also 86 coaches 40 officials and staff, plus family and friends. Average stay was three nights for those folks. And so we had an estimated economic in, or room nights of uh, 693. And that's, as far as sporting events that, that we are aware of, that's only second behind ECI. And we think those numbers will continue to grow in the future. <coughs> so uh, not to get too much in the weeds with this, but year one, it was a three-day event. After some feedback from some coaches, we wanted to change it to a two-day event. We still think we'd get the three nights because you're going to be boxing later into the evenings. But then USA Boxing approached us, wanted it to be a USA Boxing Regional, which it was, by the way, first one ever in North Carolina. But we didn't see a huge jump in number. I told you it was up 22%, which is nice. But I, I, the, the organizer had lots of conversations with coaches that said, hey, if, if this was a two-day event, we would be there because we would leave on Friday. They're already out of school on Monday. We can't leave on Thursday. So we're going to go to a two-day event next year, and it'll be longer days, so we still think it'll be a three-night stay, but we think our numbers will go up for that. Um, you don't have this in your packet because the event was canceled, but the Battle at the Beach Girls soccer uh, was canceled because of all the rain. However, Nine teams stayed overnight before it was canceled, so we had about 135 room nights from that. Uh, some updates just on some other random things, then I'm going to get into some upcoming events. Uh, we're in talks with TNT Sports. They're a group that does travel basketball tournaments, and they're expanding into North Carolina, back to the need for the scoreboards. Um, and We've got a couple dates held at the Commons. Now we're trying to work out the Commons Middle School and Northside High School to make that happen. Again, it'll be their first time in North Carolina, so I don't know what the numbers will be, but uh, with some of the other tournaments that used to be here going away, we think those could, could turn into some big numbers. Uh, we were in talks with Cycle NC to be the ending spot again for their uh, mountains to coast uh, cycling. They decided to go to Ocean Isle this year, so they are looking at us for 2025. Uh, we, we did that, I think that was three years ago was the last time we did that. Now for some updates and some upcoming events. So working with you guys and with, with Susan and her staff, uh, we are hosting seven USSSA baseball regionals. Um, the first one back in March, being the first one, had seven teams. 
The next one, he had 18 teams registered, and then same weekend as the Battle at the Beach soccer, it was rained out. So the next one is coming up April 6th and 7th. But from that, it has already led to, we're going to host a USSSA baseball national event in July. Uh, it's sponsored by Wilson and Dee Marini. You have to qualify to come if you've ever been involved with travel sports. Typically, if you qualify, you're going to go. Uh, he said 80 teams will qualify. So we think at least 50 would be kind of the, the low end would come here. And that's July 12th through the 14th. So uh, that'll be at the Commons. Coming up April 16th is our uh, Hall of Fame event. Uh, that's at Sturgeon City. Again, that's more of a local thing, but that's where we honor uh, local folks. We got five inductees going into the Hall of Fame then. And then that Saturday is our annual uh, Marine Chevy Freedom Fight Boxing event that uh, we're, we're doing two sessions this year. There's gonna be a two o'clock session and a seven o'clock session. One ticket will get you into both. That is also in conjunction with the All Marine Boxing Alumni Reunion. Uh, so we get room nights from the boxing, but we also get room nights from the reunion for that one. And then uh, our New River Splash is May 11th. That's the triathlon, duathlon, and, and 5K that you guys have been instrumental in helping us grow. Uh, it's a part of our race series. If you remember, starting last year, it became part of the North Carolina Triathlon Series. And this year, it was selected by USA Triathlon as the North Carolina State Championship. So we are the one and only state championship for North Carolina. And um, so we'll see if that increases the numbers or not by being the state championship. But, but that one continues to get bigger, better, um, just more professional. Uh, so it, it's, it's kind of becoming one of the signature events. On June 1st, uh, we have the Frogman event that's going to be on the 400 acres. It is an event that's happened before. It had gone away due to COVID and was actually going to leave us. And, and by perfect timing, I made the phone call on the right day and we were able to keep it here. They were going to go to Virginia. Um, it's got three components. There's a 5K trail run. There's a 3D bow hunting challenge. And then there's a Wild Turkey Federation dinner. Those are all on the same day. It's going to be a long day. Um, starting early in the morning, going until late at night. And... Um, it's an honor of 31 Navy SEALs, including Chris Campbell from here, that were all killed on the same day. So that there'll be 31 targets, one for each Navy SEAL that was killed. And it's a fundraiser, so we're gonna do a Warrior's Wish through Hope for the Warriors. The Sports Commission, being a nonprofit and kind of overseeing all of it, will be a beneficiary. And, uh, and then one of Chris's passions was the Wild Turkey Federation, so they'll benefit from this as well. And then ECI is actually a week earlier this year. It's June 20th through the 23rd. Um, again, scoreboards are, are dressed. They're so needed for that. Um, I think Susan would tell you just for rec basketball too, because you're trying to look backwards as you're looking at the clock and everything. But um, we're off the dead period this year being a week earlier. So there's more teams wanting in. However, there's only a limited number of spaces. So, Again, because of your support, I think you're all aware, we give out grants to events to help supplement them. ECI gets our biggest amount, and we're actually adding 2,500 to that this year to add an additional site, and it's gonna let us max out at 36 teams. We can't do more than that because of officials, because of space, because of scheduling, but uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be able to have 36 teams this year. The uh, all those, except maybe not the new site, they're streamed also. So it goes out to last year, the last count was like 40,000 people had viewed those games. And it's got your TDA logo and those kind of things on the screen as well. But uh, I will tell you if and when we get our uh, multi-purpose facility, Wells is connected to a lot of folks, including some NBA guys. And we've already been told if you ever get that, Nike, Under Armour, uh, Adidas, we can get those events there. Mm -hmm. that, that folks are flying in from all over the country, top, top athlete, high school athletes in the country. Um, then a new thing came along right after Anthony and I had talked last week. So the World Series of Arm Wrestling <laughs> Southeast Regional is going to be held in Jacksonville <laughs> over at Blackheart, just right down the street here. It's July 27th. So 
To tell you where the other regionals are, along with Jacksonville, North Carolina, Riverside, California, Fort Worth, Texas, Ogden, Utah, and Atlantic City, New Jersey. Not only do you have the folks coming to town to compete, because you, to, you have to compete in a regional and qualify for the worlds that are in Las Vegas. Tubi, if you're familiar with the Tubi app, for those of you that stream, the event will be streamed, and along with that, they do a series that highlights each city and what goes on. So Jackson, there will be an episode about Jacksonville uh, on that on that Tubi uh, app. And then uh, August 10th and 11th, we are partnering with the Onslow Flying Disc Club to host a new disc golf event. It's a B-tier event. So the, the big time ones are A, we're one level below that. There's gonna be $5,000 added cash to a, hopefully attract pros to come to that. And uh, we think we can attract some out of towners for that, but we're also hoping to show that, hey, if we built the correct disc golf course on that 400 acres, we could potentially host a level big time uh, events here. And I think that is it. There's obviously more in the fall, but I don't want to, to, to bore you with too many events. But wanted you guys to know uh, all the things that, that we're working on and what's coming up. And we're definitely seeing a lot of great momentum. And thanks to Susan and her staff and you guys, all the partnerships that we have, we're able to uh, continue to, to do some extra things. But can I answer any questions for you? Great job. Yeah, Thanks. Thanks. It, it's, it's exciting, yeah, really, it just is. to see what all you're doing. So thank you and your staff. Yeah, I appreciate appreciate and You do a whole lot with a little. That's, a, that's Because of what you huge. guys do, we're able to, to do those kind of things, like make New River Splash better, give grants to other events to help them grow. So thank you for what you do. And it's well, good, Scott, to, no. good to see we're already using that 400 acres. That's right. Mm. Uh, that's right, yeah. Well, well, Scott, thank you very much Thanks, for that. I appreciate it. was a good, good report. And I want to mention... Um, Steve Smith is my pastor at Trinity, so I pray you'll forgive me. Yeah. So there's so many Scott Smiths. There, so Scott is my middle name. I go by M. Scott Smith. There is another M. Scott Smith in my Rotary Club here in Jacksonville. So it's okay. Well, thank you so much. So good Mr. Presentation. Chairman, if I could, I'd like to just make a couple of points here. Uh, just follow on what, what Scott was saying. Uh, quick question for you. How many of these events that you just laid out here existed two years ago, three years ago? Um, obviously, ECI has been around. New River Splash is, we're, I think, in year five for that. The boxing's in about year five. But Frogman, disc golf, uh, arm wrestling, uh, you know, sledgehammers only in about five. So, yeah, Carolina, a lot Carolina of them, gloves. A lot of them are new and or they've just started growing in the last two years. Yeah, Carolina gloves are brand new. And, brand new. and Carolina gloves is the second largest aside from ECI. At and this I think point, it might right? pass ECI until ECI didn't have to have a cap on it. Yeah. So the point that I wanted to make is, is that in the past few years, we've seen their activities grow exponentially. I think part of that is because of the additional investment that we've made in them that allowed them to grow their staff and their capabilities. I think the other piece of it is it can't be undersold, and it's the fact that there's a huge partnership that's been formed that maybe didn't exist as much as it does today in the past. And that's between the Recreation Department with Susan and her folks, the Tourism Development Authority, and, and the Sports Commission. Because all three of us, they bring the resources and the expertise necessary in order to make these things happen. When you start pulling the same way, big things start happening. And if Scott said, when we have the event center, once during our conversation last week, two weeks ago, he probably said it 50 times, right? And it's true because what he won't tell you is that it's not just ECI, it's the boxing, it's, it's all the stuff that we have lined up that's busting at the seams with our current facilities. There's no telling what they're gonna look like when the sports and event center opens. So thank you, sir. Great. All right, so moving on to number five is Jamboree Concert Series and Veterans Tribute. Oh, Susan. All right, good afternoon. 
Um, I'm going to dovetail nicely into all of the athletic sports because my focus today is really going to be about some arts and some fun stuff that we have coming up in events. And I wanted to give a prequel to uh, the events because I have some good news. Um, on Tuesday night at our next council meeting, hopefully, I think it will be approved, hopefully it'll be approved, but we were awarded $25,000 grant from the North Carolina Arts Council. And so I, I say that as a prequel because your support in addition to this is really gonna help us elevate that arts and cultural piece that we keep hearing about. So uh, along with what Scott's doing and then what we can do with that arts and cultural piece, I just wanted to dovetail, we're working hard on that momentum and adding to that. So we're real excited for this. So we are going to leverage some of those funds into our Jamboree event. I think everybody's familiar with that event, but we are really trying to add to the musical components of that. And our headliner is going to be a much larger, one thing we learned from our uh, veterans tribute back in November of last year is that that headliner piece is, is critical to bring people out and to stay for the day and to really enjoy and have a great day for their family. So uh, May 4th has a great lineup of events for our Jamboree event. Live entertainment is going to be is tremendous with our new headliner band, multiple headlining. Um, but the Battle of the Bands is a new one. Alexis has been working really hard on this. She's been spearheading this new effort to really, again, showcase what we have in our community and to bring people in the area and show everybody that we have some great talent and we're gonna showcase with a fabulous Battle of the Bands. Um, but the food trucks are a big one, the market vendors, the amusements. Uh, we're excited for May 4th. It's gonna be a great event. We have uh, transitioned to some of those athletic pieces from um, the basketball tournaments that we've always had. But this year we are going to do three different things and pickleball tournament is actually gonna be our main thing going on in the gym this year. So we have a pickleball tournament, a softball tournament, and a baseball tournament. So those outside activities are going to be in full force on, the, on May 4th, really for the whole weekend when you add in um, those athletic events. So we're excited to kind of change up and do some new things for that. Um, going straight into uh, the summer months, Jam in Jacksonville is going to be our new concert series. Again, trying to elevate the musical and cultural components. This is going to be supported also with that Arts Council grant that hopefully Tuesday will be a, a green light on that. But we are going to focus on five really great Fridays throughout the summer at the Commons um, Amphitheater over there across the street from Richard Ray. Uh, we are really going to um, elevate all of the arts and culture and bring in some additional cultural componentsies, some performers, as well as some um, live music. So we are excited to just showcase that Friday afternoon. You can come to the Commons. These will be dovetailed also with our outdoor movie series, as well as our arts in the park. So there really isn't going to be a weekend in the summer that families won't have something to do. Uh, we try hard to give families an option not to leave our town and not to go somewhere else, but to, to stay close and enjoy what we have right here. And then we are excited for our next round of the Red, White & Salute event. It was a tremendous success last year, scheduled for November 1st, again at the Commons at 5 p.m. We have some great entertainment um, on the line for that event, as well as the Laser Light Show, as well as some of the nice things we were able to add to that um, you know, to that event to make it just a really great thing for all of our community to, to enjoy. So focusing on our veterans for the entire weekend, it's just one great component that the rest of the team is working on. So um, we're excited on, on some great stuff we have lined up. I did just get reminded I wanted to um, backtrack to that um, Blue Ways and Trails, and thank you for your support. I'm gonna give you an update. I did just get an update from those kayak kiosks and those vending machines that you supported so nicely for us. Um, I got the report that just in January and February, I have not gotten March's report, but we had 84 rentals between the three sites. Yeah. So we've had some great response on those kayak kiosks. We've had lots of people say, it's so easy, I don't have to worry about transporting a kayak. I can use it for an hour, an hour and a half and put it right back. It's really economical. So we've had some really good public um, response from that. But 84 just in the colder months of January and February. So. 
um, after today's rain and tomorrow's going to be beautiful. I can't wait to see what March and April and, and, you know, the beautiful months that we have ahead of us. So again, thank you for your support on that. I really think that it's, it's going to, it's just a nice amenity and surprisingly enough, or I shouldn't say surprisingly enough, the number one place that people are renting is from Northeast Creek Park. I don't know why I thought it would have been the landing or somewhere that's very visible, but Northeast Creek Park has the most rentals. They had 18 rentals in the month of February and 14 in the month of January. Now, Susan, there's two locations, right? Or we three? have three, actually. Three, okay. So we have Northeast Creek Park, we have the landing, and then we have Riverwalk Marina. So we have three locations. Okay. And you can use your uh, the Greenways and, well, the Blueways map. You can actually, you know, go from one to the other if you really wanted to. And we haven't had any mishaps. We had one missing kayak, but it was up in some marshland and we found it the next day. So, so far, so good. <laughs> but it's been a really nice amenity and I will certainly keep the group posted on, you know, as we move into the warmer months and getting those reports and just kind of demonstrating to you that I think that was a good investment. We've had some good response, so. Kudos uh, to you and your support, so thank you for that. Any questions for me? I, I could talk all day long on all the great things, but I will certainly pass it off to my to my coworkers here. And That's not Susan, but thank you very much for Absolutely. everything you do. I thank you. really appreciate, we all really appreciate it, only, not only here, but I appreciate it at the Commons when I go occasionally to exercise. I see you, so. you're doing good, you're diligent. I see you going in uh, there, running in there, getting Thanks it up, thanks a lot, done. and you're doing a great okay. job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Actually, would you mind advancing the slide? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you want me to just do this, or you, you want to tag team Susan on this? Susan is involved in a surprise tag team on this presentation. <laughs> and, and again, this is just a, another demonstration on how we're being more collaborative with um, our partners internally and externally. So I'm, I'm going to do a little bit, and then I'll turn it over to you to talk about some of the improvements specifically. But as you recall, I believe it was two years ago, we allocated funds to purchase bleachers for um, a couple reasons. One was because we had the 40th Beirut uh, observance ceremony where we had, I don't know how many people there. It was thousands of people, and we wanted more seating. So rather than renting them for $15,000, we decided to purchase them for the second benefit of having more seating at Jack Amiat for baseball. So the initial estimate that we gave you was based on pricing that we saw on the internet. When we put the, put the, the uh, purchase out for bid, the, the bid amount came back at roughly half of what we had budgeted. Recognizing that and also recognizing that we wanted to have some more improvements out here to, to accommodate more people and make it a little bit more of a spectator type of facility. Um, we've been investing some of that remaining money in the improvements that you're going to see here on these slides. So do you want to take it from sure. there and give an update on yeah, no, what we've absolutely. been working on? Be happy to. So what you're seeing here is what we did internal to the city. Um, Wally's folks over in engineering and his street screws did a great job with pouring this cement pad. That is for the bleachers that um, Anthony was just speaking to. You will also see that speaker up there on the, um, on the corner. That is some audio that we were able to add so that the sound is going to project really nicely so everybody can hear the wonderful scores that are team is going to be um, making. Uh, we're also extending the dugouts. We have extended the cement on that. Next will be that fence and that roof line and, and purchasing some benches so the teams have enough. So I will go ahead and give an update on the teams in case anybody's wondering. We do have regular meetings with the owners, the Patinos. We met last week and they did give us a great update on the number of players that they have scheduled. They're, in t they're coming into town from all over um, you know, all over eastern the eastern coast and even even farther. So, it sounds like they have everything in line for a great team. I think they had 22 on their roster as of last week, but they're still recruiting and their coach Art is very knowledgeable with all things baseball. So he's doing a good job also recruiting and talking to those college coaches. Um, what you're looking at here is the other side on third base side. That is where the bleachers will go there. Uh, the dugout is also going to get extended. The side over here left of that um, uh, fencing is going to be some of that patio area. Press, so press the button. Oh, 
Oh, fabulous. Didn't know that was <laughs> Magic. there. there so this is. is <laughs> thank you. Uh, this is the patio area. This is where the Patinos will set up uh, a garden area for food and beverage. That's going to give that real holistic uh, baseball feel to it. So people and seating, so people can be in there and then still watch the game. Um, so. Um, a couple other things just in general. Off to the left, we are going to be putting up. Uh, Anthony's crews have been fantastic. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, very large poles right there. We've been in, they've installed those. That is going to be for the backstop netting. We're extending the netting so that for safety, safety purposes. And then the tops of those are going to be repurposed into building a batting cage. So it's going to work out really nicely that we will make everybody safe, as safe as we can with some extended netting, but then we will also ex install a batting cage so those pitchers can warm up and do great things during the games. Also, their uh, patinos are working on it's getting all of their uh, ducks in a row as far as their food vendors and all of their other beverage vendors, but they are really on top of it and they're giving us regular, they stopped by to bring me some stickers yesterday because we were using them and giving it to all of our patrons, but um, they are they are diligently working on it and we are excited about their season and, and, and um, doing some good things over there. So um, I'm going through my checklist of items. I think that was- I, I think you've done, a, you've done a great job there. The, the, again, the most important concept there is that we've been able to stretch the dollar by working as a team internal to the city of Jacksonville. Everything that you, you've seen there we did, okay? And it's to make the dollar go as far as we can and provide, provide a high quality experience for the player as well as for the patrons. And I will just add one other note. I was reminded one of the other pieces that they were also securing was fencing. Um, so as you know, they, they need a perimeter fence to kind of keep, because it's going to be a ticketed event. And so they did secure some funding from Onslow County and the commissioners approved a, a purchase for them. So. Um, they are purchasing that. It is going to be used for the games, and then when it gets done with the games, I think it's going to be stored by us, and then we'll have access to use it as well. So, again, great partnership, good use of resources, um, and we're we're excited to certainly help them with their adventures and then partner on how we can utilize um, all the good things that's getting done. So when's the first game again? June 1st. June 1st. June 1st. And the Patinos have been very, very appreciative of all the contributions from the TDA as, as well as the city of Jacksonville. What you see there on, on the screen is a first pass design at a banner that will hang in the outfield. Mm. You know, the Patinos, because of all of our effort, are going to purchase a banner on our, on our behalf and, and hang it up with all the other sponsors that have contributed in one way, shape, or form. Very good. Thank you again. Good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to our committee reports, and today we've got a, uh, an insert, a written report from the tourism related. That was pretty interesting, I found. You guys, thanks a lot. Then we'll move on to our promotions committee, and we've got a hotelier update. Yeah, unless you have anything to add, uh, I have nothing to update oh, yeah, for the hotelers at this no, session. Not at this time. No update at this time, okay. Then we'll move to our marketing and events update. Teresa. Good afternoon. <clears throat> so I would like to add to what Susan said about baseball. We met with uh, the Patinas this morning, and uh, they did tell us they were up to 24 players and that they were, um, without question, they'll meet what they're looking for in 30 to 40 players. Um, one thing that I thought was cool is they said that um, – in talking with the folks that run the uh, league for that, that run the league, they said that Jacksonville has been one of the most welcoming communities when we pr help them promote to, um, we really just did it on social and a tiny bit of radio, but we uh, help them promote to get host families to uh, house the players. They said it's never gone so well, that they have so many host families that they actually have some like in the hopper. So should, should they need extra homes, they actually have them. So what a great community we have. We know that, but it's nice that someone else recognizes it. Do they help mow the grass when they're not playing baseball? <laughs> well, I don't know, but we can ask. <laughs> that you would know, help make my decision. Part of the family, right? <laughs> <laughs> I so. So we're going to start with uh, Susan for some updates. 
on the good work that she's doing. Thanks, Teresa. I wanted to let you know we have had some nice media placements. Um, Cardinal and Pine is an online statewide outlet. They do some features, a lot of hard news. And um, I actually helped, we, we planted the idea for this story about 17 veteran owned businesses across North Carolina when she came here in, in the spring. Um, to the right, you see the screen grab of our section in this article. It was a, an article that rounded up several places and they featured Aji Ichiban and their Okinawan cuisine. Um, the owner there is a veteran and his wife is the amazing um, chef. And so they featured them. It also had a link back to our site, just kind of a little FYI, if the link comes back to your site from a, a news outlet like this or a very busy online outlet with a lot of traffic, you get a little SEO bump and you come up earlier in online search results. Um, we had a second article in Cardinal and Pine more recently that talked about a little bit calmer way to spend break. Many places, again, across North Carolina. Mike's Farm was our addition to that. And um, we talked about the restaurant, the the fun things to do, the NC Products Barn, and they used an image from um, the petting area with the goats and that kind of thing. If you've not been there, that spot is very cool. Um, even move, moving along, um, we're always experimenting um, with different places to put our message in the earned media place. And so this time we worked with My Tar Hill Adventures. It's an online YouTube television show. And they came here in January and showcased uh, seven different destinations in our area. If you don't have time to watch the whole thing, you can watch very short snippets. It's in the um, the snippet links are underneath it on YouTube. I really hope you'll go and, and and see Jacksonville through their eyes. We had two young people we worked with. They were they were lovely, very very cool. We've also had some influencer visits. Um, NC Travel Eats is an influencer out of Raleigh. She and her family were at Topsail Beach and decided to duck in. They visited El Cerro Tacos and did a collaborative reel with them. Um, if if you haven't been there, I encourage you to go. It's also on the International Food Trail. And then moving along, we had a wonderful news um, last month. Our team and the Hampton Inn team went to Durham for the North Carolina Restaurant and Lodging Association Stars of the Industry Awards. It was a very glamorous, very cool event. And Ziamara Toledo was recognized as one of the top lodging managers of the year in North Carolina. This is the second time we've had a Jacksonville person to catch our state's um, attention. And so super proud of Ziamara and her team there. Visit NC's um, State Tourism Conference was last week. Um, it was filled with a lot of workshops. They rolled out their new ad campaign, which I think you all are going to be very pleased if you see it. And they focus their advertising outside of North Carolina with the goal of bringing stuff into state. So um, you, you may not see it, but you might if you're traveling. And um, we had training about the different tools on AI for tourism, social media, and marketing strategies. I did media pitching to about 15 different media who were brought in, some from out of state and even one from Canada. So we'll see how um, that goes and we're grateful for that opportunity there. While we're talking about Visit North Carolina, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the wins we had with this year's travel guide. It is printed, it is in all 17 visitor centers right now. 17 is not the right number, but anyway, there's 17 million people who come through our visitor centers in North Carolina. They print around 350,000 of these magazines. They're beautiful, great paper, well done. Um, they're mailed to people also. They're also occasionally Poly bagged with um, um, a magazine like Better Homes and Gardens and plastic wrapped with that. That happens to for about 70,000 of these copies. So it's delivered into the hands of potential travelers and we and they geo target um, which states get those. Um, I, we were super excited to have the International Food Trail receive an entire page worth of copy. Guys, if we had had to buy that, um, it would have cost us $28,000. $28,000. So we were super proud of that. Um, we partnered with Heidi Bellotto. You see her amazing pictures there, and, and her images are also on our website. Um, we also had a couple of our other places mentioned. Um, Salem with Onslow County Tourism also pitches the travel.
travel guide. Um, this one featured Walton's Distillery. We had a lovely mention of um, the Swansboro Mullet Festival. And then yet yeah, another thing that I'm very proud of is the way that once they heard about our Onslow Veterans powwow and they heard about amazing Raquel Painter, our Jacksonville native who has done so much um, to well, to start and, and to maintain the visibility, they asked Raquel to write the entire section of the book that dealt with our Native American story. Um, I'm sharing that spread. You see that on the left. She did a beautiful job. There's another page in between there. And then on the right side, you'll see the screen grab of the page that talks about the powwows in North Carolina. We have a wonderful picture of our powwow, and we're also pulled out in the sidebar. So kudos to Raquel. Appreciation for her amazing partnership and, and the partnership from Visit and See. Teresa has some more good things to tell you as well. Thank you, ma'am. So we're doing some, some great things, Anthony. Thank you for your leadership and your guidance too. Um, Absolutely. <clears throat> so wanted to just, since we met, we've had a couple of our events that have happened. We are deep in event season right now so if you wonder where i am i am buried and we're marketing everything so uh almost all of them currently um fashion week was early march and you'll remember latoya lives in okinawa and she'll be back next year she'll be back in about a year but it it's amazing to me how you can run an event from you know halfway around the world and still have it be successful but she doesn't. She's got some good people on the ground as well. So uh, she brought back this year Vivica Fox, who is her celebrity host that came in last year. Um, I spoke to her and to her manager, and they really, really feel the hospitality from Jacksonville. They love our community. So that speaks volumes for what we do. So Latoya sold six hundred, uh, 300 tickets. <clears throat> and when I spoke to her right after the event, she was traveling home the following week, but um, I know that they had over 80 night, uh, overnight stays that they could count, and I dare say, I think it should end up around 130 for the event. They bring in models from out of state uh, and some designers, so. Um, they stay for the weekend. Another event that we did that has happened is the St. Patty's Engineers Challenge, which is um, a, a pretty cool situation. So you remember they are part of the MCCS race. It's not really a series anymore, but of their races. And <clears throat> this year, um, I don't know if you're aware, but Everett retired, and I'm working with Beth. There's a new marketing uh, manager out there working with us on the events. So she and I, when we started planning this, she brought up, you know, these are the kind of events women gravitate to. They love this mud and all this stuff. Not me personally, but a lot of women do. Um, <clears throat> so what we wanted to do was focus on growing the, the women participation. So um, we knew they had capacity for 600 runners, and that's it. So we started the campaign. We did some, um, some, some really specific targeting for that campaign towards women, and um, while not ignoring our men, obviously. And they ended up with 600, as much as they could do. So we had to call off the advertising. We pulled the campaign about four days early, three or four or five days early, um, because they were maxed out. They probably would have had like 40 more people register. A lot of people will even show up that day if the weather's nice. So. 101 increase over last year uh, in number of participants, and we were able to grow the women participation from 25%, which has been standard for all the years they've been doing it, to 41% this year. So they were happy with the results. Here's a few of the photos that we got. We captured some great photography from this event. <clears throat> If you're interested, it's not posted for the entry for next year, but if you're interested, let me know. Mm. I'll, I'll make sure you're aware. <laughs> Go back. I, I thought I saw you in the, uh, in the back. <laughs> With my jacket and my phone taking pictures. <laughs> She's not a woman that does mud. <laughs> yeah, no. Mm -mm. No, no, no. That's not my thing. So uh, some upcoming events. This is what we're working on. Uh, so we've got the, and several of these you'll notice are new events that were, um, that you funded this year. So they, we don't know, but we'll be reporting back. The Irreverent Warriors um, uh, 
suicide prevention hike is coming up pretty quick in a couple of weeks. The same weekend we have the Bridal Expo. Remember, they moved to Sunday, and it worked really well for them last year. The Filipino Fiesta is new. Uh, the Battle of the Bands is new with Jamboree. Um, the Frogman out on the 400 acres is new. That's pretty fun. It's amazing to me. I did not realize how big bow hunting is. It's, it's a much bigger deal than I realized. <clears throat> and then we have our um, Charity Ball Weekend and our uh, NC Pacific Arts Festival. So um, you remember we have, uh, we, in partnership with Onslow County Tourism, we purchase um, ad space in our state magazine. Onslow County has three placements and we have three placements. Our placements are October so that we can promote our veterans tribute and we buy March and April. So March, we promoted our international food trail, which has huge interest on the state level. And uh, we wanted to promote our blue ways, our brand new blue ways. So we promoted um, breathtaking blue ways, gorgeous green ways, Jacksonville always. Hmm. And that's what your marketing team's up to. Teresa, do you mind backing up to the stars of the, of the industry? Yeah, happy to. I want to say a couple things here and mm -hmm. then offer uh, Mr. Davis an opportunity to interject if he'd like to. <clears throat> so with, with, the, with the assistance of, of Susan Dozier, um, we, meaning the Tourism Development Authority, have um, nominated two stars of the industry candidates two years in a row, and in both cases, they've been selected, okay? And, you know, I didn't really realize the gravity of this award until I joined Mr. Davis and Teresa and Alexis and everybody else to attend that. And when you see um, the type of hotels and the types of restaurants that the other award winners are coming from, you see the quality of folks that we're nominating. I mean, what are some of these hotels, like the fancy one in Raleigh, the Duke? You know, the Duke Estate and Susan's got all the all these memorized. Washington and Duke, uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, you know, so we're talking about customer service from super high-end hotels, right? And the story that we're able to tell from the folks that we've nominated competes very well with them. It may not be about a facility that has the best money or the best golf course or whatever, but we have the best people. And I think that's why we continue to show up year after year. Mr. Davis, do you have any, any thoughts on that? Well, just that I will say Ziamara and, and this team were complete, absolutely deserving of this award. And as I always say, it, you know, the staff in hospitality and, and the people that you meet when you come to Jacksonville, it is our community. Um, and, and it was just super exciting to see two years in a row mm -hmm. that acknowledged and, and a lot of people talking about Jacksonville at this event. So. That's what I was going to say. It's nice to be there and have people recognize Jacksonville, North Carolina, yes. you know, winning some awards and doing good things. Yes. NCRLA loves us. They shared photos of our table um, during their stories that night and online. So anyway, they, they, they were happy we were there. It was really flattering. I think they got one of me while I was eating a sandwich. You know, <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was a perfect representation of our community. Can you can you go forward to St. Patty's? And I'm not trying to belabor, but there's some things behind the scenes that I'd really like you to know. Go to one of the action shots, if you would. Mm -hmm. uh, something that we've been investing in this year and a little bit in the past year is photography. You know, a, an image, a picture says a thousand words. And, and unfortunately, some of the images that we had taken years ago have gotten a little long in the tooth. So the images you see here, as well as the ones you saw with the boxing tournament and some others are brand new from this year that we've added to our inventory to help sell our community. And so. it does have a huge impact on an ad campaign as well. And some of the events have, you know, resources to do that. Most of them do not. So getting good photography is, is critical. Big difference between taking pictures with your iPhone 
and sending a professional out there. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That is impressive. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. You're welcome. Thank you, Susan. All right, gentlemen, we're at the point of the meeting where you have any additional director's comments. Get your opportunity to lengthen the meeting. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, great, right. I like that. I always, I always come out of here energized and excited. Uh, thank you all for, for all you do from yeah. every one of you all, and uh, you too, Anthony. And, That's right. <laughs> uh, and Susan and, and on the screen, thank you all. It's, uh, yeah. We, we love this place, and it's nice to see you all do, too. So thank you. And thank you, Scott. <laughs> thank you, Scott. <laughs> I'm checking out his tie, though. What about, what about the tie? Uh, tie, that, that was oh, the tie. I saw it, yeah. So we got an uh, opportunity to adjourn. So Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you so much. You didn't. You didn't.